Hi everyone, welcome back to our e-learning series. This is Kristen Hilty from Making Math Make Sense. Today I'm gonna to show you some easy ways to help your kids practice their math facts. Uh, rather than just using plain old boring traditional flashcards that we tend to have floating all around the house, we have created a way to uh, simplify those flashcards and put uh, 10 facts together, actually 20 facts together on one card. You'll see these are just index cards. I'm gonna show you here in a minute how to make them. And what we have the kids do, because students do make these cards, is we are gonna put times five in the center. So if I'm gonna work on my five facts, you can see I have in a random order the numbers one through 10 around my card. If I wanna know seven times five, I'm gonna fold this flap in and I can see the product is 35. If I wanna know five groups of five, I can fold this tab in and I can see that the product is 25. The reason why this card works is when you flip it over to the back, we have the inverse operation of division. Now we're going to divide by five. If I wanna know 40 divided by five, I fold my tab in and I can see the quotient is eight. 50 divided by five, fold this tab in and I can see it is 10. This works for multiplication division. It also works for addition subtraction. If I want to add five, if I'm gonna add five, if I wanna do six plus five, I fold this tab in and I can see 11. If I wanna do eight plus five, I fold this tab in and I see 13. Turn it to the back, and now you're gonna work on that inverse operation of subtraction. So now I'm going to be subtracting five. 12 minus five, seven. Seven minus five, two. So you can see what we were doing with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, we want kids to be able to see the inverse. We want them to see how addition, subtraction connect together. We want them to see how multiplication, division connect together. So instead of having 20 different flashcards for each of those individual facts, they can see how those facts work together as a family here. So we have our multiplication, division of five, and we have our addition, subtraction of five working together on those cards. Now, for our younger learners in kindergarten, first grade, who aren't working necessarily with addition, subtraction, but they are working on making a number, what makes 10, what makes five, we do our friends of cards. So for our friends of cards, we put our whole here in the center. So if my whole is 10, I want to know what works with six to make 10. I can fold this tab in here and I can see four. Six and four make 10. What works with seven to make 10? Seven and three together make 10. With our partner cards or our friends of cards, when we turn this one over to the back, we don't have an inverse, we just still have that same whole. But now I can see eight. What works with eight to make 10? I can see two and eight make 10. What works with six to make 10? Six and four make 10. So for our younger learners, we don't have the operation. We're, we're not working on that addition subtraction. We're working on that part, part, whole combination. If this is my whole, what are my two parts to make that whole? Um, you can see here with this one, if, I'm, if my whole is five, because I don't have as many partners as I did with 10 to make five, we repeat some of those over again so that we get that extra practice and we can still fill all the tabs in. Same thing is true. And you can see what that looks like on the back of our five as well. So how do you make one of these cards? It's pretty simple. All you need are index cards. And I literally take a stack of index cards while I'm watching TV. Um, I'll put more than one together here and a pair of scissors. And I turn those index cards sideways. If you wanna get out your ruler and measure, you can. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put four small slits on each side that's going to give me five tabs. Once I have those five tabs, I turn them in this direction. I'm gonna cut straight across from those four slits and I'm gonna put four slits over here on this side so that I will have five tabs over here on this side, which will give me my total of 10 tabs. Hand these to the kids. The kids now take over. It is their responsibility to make these and you decide which facts set of facts are you going to work on. Let's say that we want to work on um, multiplying by 10. If we're gonna work on multiplying by 10, we put times 10 in the center. And then in a random order, you have kids fill in those other factors from one to 10. So up here in the top left, I might start by putting three, underneath three, 10, two, nine, seven, 
one, five, eight, six, four. And I literally just call those up off the top of my head. The reason you don't want them in a straight order of one to 10 is we don't want rote memorization. We want kids uh, using their strategies to work on those facts. If I wanna know what is three groups of 10, I'm now gonna fold this tab in over here and I put that product of 30. 10 groups of 10, we fold this in and we put the product of 100. So you start by having kids make these. Don't let them turn it over to the back. Have them fold that tab in. Um, and put that product on there. We did attach a multiplication and, um, and addition table for you underneath this video that you can have your kids use if they are still working on their facts to be able to fill in um, what those products, or if you're doing the addition subtraction, what the sums are on those tabs. Have them keep folding. Just put one, put that product on the back here. Um, you'll notice when I was reading mine, I said eight groups of 10 instead of eight times 10. That helps our kids paint a visual picture, which helps develop that conceptual understanding of multiplication. That with multiplication, we are working on equal groups. So whenever I have kids read a multiplication problem, I always have them read it with the words groups of instead of times. Just something you might want to try at home as well uh, with your child. Now, once I have that part done, now I can turn it over to the back. And now in the center, I'm going to put divide by 10. Or if I were making an addition subtraction card, then I would put minus if it was 10 that I was working on on the back. And then I have my card made. That's all there is to it. Uh, there are different ways that you can modify it for um, our upper grade students. Sometimes teachers like them to have all three ways that they can show a multiplication problem. Um, and on the back, you can see three ways that they can represent that division problem. Those are some other changes you can put into it. If you have kids who are working on square numbers and square roots, we can put n squared in the center, and then we can turn it to the back and we have the square root of n so that they can practice um, those facts as well. We did put a link on here for you that if you would like. Uh, this is a book that I wrote with uh, my co-author, Eliza Thomas, uh, helping kids work on their math facts. So. Uh, this here has a lot of additional resources as well as those flashcards. You will see that there are um, games for purposeful practice for addition and subtraction as well as for multiplication division. All the games that we have in this book, we also have them in the back for you referenced on half sheets of paper as well. So this we have as an e-book e that you can click the link to download um, and purchase that if that's something you're interested in. I hope you enjoyed a new way to look at flashcards. I hope you're having fun learning your math at home. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put a comment in our comment box and we'll be more than happy to answer it for you. Happy learning.